In this course, on several occasions, we have talked about the symmetries of system, okay, system that we um, um, study. And in this video, and, and next, next one, and maybe next to next, we would start talking about uh, how symmetries that are present in the system provide us with certain conservation laws. Okay, that's the uh, thing which we want to have in this video. But before I talk, uh, start talking about uh, symmetries and uh, corresponding conservation laws, I want to settle a few minor things. So I will talk first about two uh, things. One is what is called Euler's theorem, a very simple uh, theorem, and also about Einstein's summation convention. Okay, so that's how we will start uh, this lecture. Okay, fine. I'm, I'm still in the frame, so it's okay. Okay, so as I said, I want to talk about Euler's theorem. Okay, so idea is simple. Imagine you have um, some function which is a polynomial function. Okay, in let's say two variables to begin with. Let's say I have some function h of let me make h slightly simpler x y. Okay, and I'm looking right now at a function of degree 2. So h is poly polynomial in degree 2. So I could have something like this. You could have x square, y square plus x, y. Okay, you can multiply some coefficients here. Now, even though it's um, not even though, I mean, it's a degree two polynomial, but another special thing about this polynomial is it is homogeneous. Okay, it's a homogeneous function, meaning each term is of uh, degree two. So this has two powers here. This also has two powers. This also has two powers because one power of x, one power of y. Okay, so that this h is a homogeneous function. If I add a term like C3x here, then this h is no longer a homogeneous function. Okay, so let's take a homogeneous function. Now, if I take a partial derivative with respect to x, for example, so let's say I take del h over del x. Now, when I do so, I remove one power of x from each term. So from here, one power of x will be gone. From here, it will be gone, meaning this will give you a zero. This one has one power of x, so that will be gone and you'll be left only with y, okay? So that's what happens. Whenever you take a derivative with respect to one of the variables, that power is gone. But if you multiply x, you put that power back, okay? So let me... Um, let's say let's say we take x square. Okay, so what I'm saying is del x square over del x is 2x, but if you multiply with x again, you get 2x square, which is what you had originally except for this factor of 2. And this factor 2 you have got because the 2 here. Okay. Let's look at what happens when you um, look at this term. Okay, so again, I by taking a partial derivative, I remove a factor of x, but when I multiply the x again, that is back, and I get x, y. Okay? So you can already see probably that um, if I take a function, 
which is homogeneous of second degree, then the following is going to happen. If you take, in this case uh, for h, x del h over del x plus y del h over del y, then you are going to get 2h, okay? Because when you do this, you get a 2x square. I mean, if there's a C1 factor C1 here, you will, your C1 will be again here. Okay, and then when del x, uh, del over del x acts on this, it gives zero, but when you do a partial derivative with respect to y, it will generate another uh, y square term. Okay, in addition, you'll have a factor of two. And this one here, which you may uh, realize that this will not create a power of 2 by taking partial derivative with x or with y but when you add them because you're adding here this addition will create the two powers so here you will have y del by del y of x y that will again generate x y right and then when you add these two you get 2 x y so it's clear that if I take partial derivatives and multiply with those relevant variables and sum over the all variables I get the function back and what shows up here as a coefficient is the degree degree of um, that polynomial or, or that function so clearly if this was a degree 3 function a homogeneous function of degree 3 you would have gotten a 3 here okay that's uh, what is Euler's theorem So it says, if H with let's say lots of um, several variables X N is a homogeneous function of degree n degree m okay then if you uh, take the partial derivative with respect to all these uh, variables and multiply them with that same variable again and you sum over all variables then you'll get the same function back and the coefficient will be the um, degree of that function. Okay, and that's uh, Euler's theorem. Okay, that's one thing which I wanted to talk about. Just hold on for a second. Okay. Okay, so another thing is that um, you see I'm writing down lots of summation symbols like here. Okay, so I have to write uh, these summation symbols lots of times and they appear very frequently in your equations. So they make your equation look not so simple. So what I will do is I will stop writing the summation symbols and I can Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so I did something here. Let's see. Okay, I should remove it. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, so you see if I have to write, let's say a dot product, A dot B a dot b okay two vectors a and b in three dimensions let's say then i will write this as a alpha b alpha and summation alpha runs from one to three okay that's what i have been doing till now things of this sort but really i don't need to write this summation symbol because i can make a shorthand notation and say whenever such a summation appears i will just drop it and write simply 
A alpha, B alpha. Okay, and I will remind myself that there is a summation over alpha because I can notice that there are the, the alpha appears twice. So whenever an index appears twice, I will know that I was summing over it. Okay, and this is um, a very powerful thing, which is um, I mean, from what I'm saying, it's not evident why it's so powerful right now. It just looks like a simple way of or a neater way of writing things. But this becomes very powerful when you are dealing with um, uh, tensors. So dropping this summation symbol is called Einstein's Einstein summation convention. Einstein summation convention. OK? which just says repeated uh, if in if in an expression you see a repeated index there is a summation there, implied there okay if the summations have been dropped um maybe i'll give you a simple exercise to do let's say you have two vectors a and b which are given to you okay and um if i ask you to write a dot b square using Einstein summation convention, how would you write it? Okay, A dot B is A I B I. So I have the index I getting repeated twice. Now I have another A dot B still remaining because there's a square. I should write again A J B J. Okay. Now you see I have not written A I B I again. I have written A J B J. And what you have to do is you have to convince yourself that it would be disastrous to use again the index i. So meaning if instead of writing this, you had written a i b i, a i b i, you get a wrong answer. And it's obvious, uh, but I will leave it to you to figure it out. Okay. So here we make a rule. Um, once you have done this exercise, you will understand why I'm making this rule. So we make a rule that any index should not appear more than twice. Okay, because if it does, then you are making mistakes. Then you are, what whatever you are writing is not correct. Okay, so that will be a rule. can appear at most twice only twice okay so you will have if an index is repeated meaning if there is a summation over it then it should appear in that expression only two times not more okay there may be uh, some cases where an index is repeated but comes more than three times or more than two times but then there we will make a specification. We will tell clearly that this index is uh, repeated and there is a summation over this index also. But if I don't say anything and if you see a repeated index, index twice, then there is a summation. If I don't specify anything and you see a repeated index appearing more than two times, then I have made a mistake. Okay, that will be uh, what it is. Okay. So henceforth, I will never um, write a summation symbol. OK. So good. So I'll use Einstein summation convention. I'll also use um, Euler's theorem for homogeneous functions and use them to look at um, our kinetic term, which we had in the Lagrangian. OK. That's what we'll do. So let's go to maybe next page. OK, recall. that the kinetic energy term okay in the lagrangian when you're using generalized coordinates has the following form the t is t0 plus t1 plus t2 okay where t0 is of degree 0 in generalized velocities okay i hope you remember this degree 0 in 
generalized velocities, so q dots. This guy is linear, meaning degree 1 in generalized velocities and t2 was is quadratic or degree 2 in q dots. Okay, and um, maybe I can write, yeah, that's fine. So, let's uh, look at the, this expression one by one. So, look at T0 term first. There is not much to see because maybe let's first look at T1. Okay, let's look at first T1. So, if I take T1, right, then if I take a derivative of T1 with respect to Q alpha dot, I remove a power of alpha dot, then I multiply Q alpha dot here, I insert that power back again, okay, and if there is a summation implied because the alpha is repeated twice here, okay, so there is a summation here, and you know, sorry, I'm looking at T1, you know that you will get T1 back. The coefficient here, which is multiplying, is 1. Okay, because it's a function of degree 1. Let's look at this, delta T2, which is quadratic, alpha dot, Q alpha dot, again there is a summation implied, and you know what you'll get? You get T2. Okay, and here it's, there is no dependence on generalized velocity, so this one, Q alpha dot, Q alpha dot, there is no need to do the summation, it is 0 anyway. Okay. So, that is what we get, which means in general, if you are taking a derivative of Q alpha dot, Okay, this will not be equal to, this will not be proportional to T. This will not be proportional to T. Okay, it will not be proportional to T because this guy uh, becomes 2 times T2, this guy becomes T1 and this guy is 0. Okay, so it cannot be proportional to T in general. Um, that's, that's one thing. Yeah, but if let's say for some reason, which we'll talk about soon, your t was just t2. Okay, let's say your t had only the quadratic pieces. So if t is equal to t2, then q alpha dot delta t over del q alpha dot. Okay that will be 2 times t if um, this is the situation perfect okay now let's um, let's proceed um, yeah Okay, just a second, hold on. Okay, so now what I want to talk about is um, uh, time translation symmetry. Okay, and uh, we will see what follows from there. 
So imagine um, you have a system that is isolated from everything else, okay, which is not being influenced by something else. So imagine you have some set of particles which are interacting with each other in some manner and um, but there's no no external influence on that system so there's no external agency which is exerting forces on this so you know what that um, the Lagrangian of this system would not depend explicitly on time okay it would depend ex implicitly on time through the coordinates of um, the generalized coordinates or Cartesian coordinates what in whichever manner you are writing uh, the time dependence will be implicit through the coordinates but not explicit okay which is um, uh, what you expect from an isolated system and that's uh, let's say imagine let's say we have such a system okay so let's say we have an isolated system now if you have such a system then your Lagrangian so by Q I mean all the the entire set of generalized coordinates and Q dot the entire set of generalized velocities okay I'm not talking about any one-dimensional system this this is uh, a multi-dimensional it has several degrees of freedom okay so if this is the case then you will not have a dependence on t and let's see what the consequence of this is to do so I want to look at the total derivative of the Lagrangian okay so I want to look at what dl over dt is okay so for now what I will do is even though I'm interested in such a system I will keep it general so I will keep L to depend on Q Q dot and T and later I will put uh, the time uh, I, I will remove the time dependence okay so for now we'll keep general so any system maybe something is influencing from outside all those things are here now so del L over del T so I just uh, do the chain rule and get del L over del T plus del L over del Q alpha Q alpha dot now I should also differentiate L with respect to Q alpha dots because L is a function of all Q and Q dots okay Q alpha double dot and Einstein con summation convention is being used right now okay now this relation by itself cannot tell you anything it cannot tell you because I have not put an information on how the system evolves with time okay for that I need to put the uh, e put the equations of motion into this okay so I'm going to now throw in the information about how system evolves meaning I will use all the Lagrange equations here which says that del L over del Q alpha dot D over DT minus del L over del Q alpha is zero okay so I'm assuming right now that all the uh, forces that you have are conservative so I can write them in the Lagrangian itself and on the right hand side you don't have any leftover generalized, uh, generalized uh, forces okay so I'm imagining a uh, system with conservative forces okay so that's the equation of motion which I want to substitute here meaning I will what I'll do is I'll take this term del L over del Q alpha and substitute this so this is the total derivative of L with uh, total derivative of del L over del Q alpha dot so that's what I'm going to put it put in here so it says dl over dt equals del L over del t plus Q 
q alpha dot d over dt delta l or delta q alpha dot plus q alpha double dot okay q alpha dot okay i hope you can see that these two terms this one and this one both these terms can be combined together it's um, clear so i write del over del t of the lagrangian the partial derivatives then d over dt of q alpha dot del l over del q alpha dot is it clear so when this total derivative acts on q alpha dot it generates q double dot and um, this one remains so this is the second term and when you take the first term leave the first term without acting with the derivative and the derivative acts on the second term you get this piece okay this one so this relation is correct and now you have total derivatives on both the sides of equation so i can bring them together and write uh, d over dt q alpha dot delta l over del q alpha dot minus l minus l and that equals minus del l over del t and that is correct yes so i have taken the del l over del t on the other side now you see if your system is isolated then l does not depend explicitly on time meaning the partial derivative with respect to time would be zero so the right hand side would be zero okay this would be zero um for an isolated system and if that is the case then this quantity would be conserved because the total derivative of that quantity in the in the round brackets will be zero okay which means whichever way your system is moving that that quantity does not change it's a constant of integration so it makes sense to define in general not necessarily for an isolated system let's say we define in general uh this quantity to be h and this h depends on q whatever the generalized velocities are because they appear in the lagrangian right so l has q dependence q dots l has t okay so i define h q q dot t to be q alpha dot delta l over del q alpha dot minus l okay and you are summing over all the maybe this time i will just write okay so this quantity is called the hamiltonian of this system okay generally hamiltonian will have a uh, generalized momentum as it's in its argument but for now uh, let's also call this as a hamiltonian um so what you see is for a general system d over dt of h equals minus del del l over del t let me put a box around it okay now i wanted to make the remark about uh, isolated system okay now if your system is isolated it has no time uh, explicit time dependence that is zero which implies that h is a conserved quantity okay so d over dt of h will be zero meaning the hamiltonian is conserved is con is conserved
Okay, that's good. Not only that, you don't... Um, I mean, even if your system was not isolated, even if it was interacting with another system, or let's say if your system was put in an external field which does not depend on time, okay? Now, if it does not depend on time, or it's uh, correspondingly its potential does not depend on time, then the Lagrangian will not depend explicitly on time. And del L over del T, the partial derivative of L with respect to time, will still be zero. And again, you will have Hamiltonian as a conserved quantity for that system, okay? So even for a system in a conservative field, okay, you still get H to be conserved. And note that your H is a first integral of motion. Okay, because remember what uh, the functional form of first integrals was. Uh, your first integral depends only on generalized velocity and coordinates and time possibly. Okay, it, it does not depend on, uh, it's not something involving a second derivative of time. So, which means if I give you an expression with um, uh, h equal to constant, then this is a uh, differential equation of first order. Okay, so you immediately get a um, first integral of motion if you know that this system has a symmetry of time translation. Okay, that's one nice thing, but we still need to know or would like to know what H is physically. Okay, from here it's not evident what H is and that's what we want to do. Uh, to figure out what H is, and it's not that's not hard. Let me see how I want to do it. Okay, that's good. So here we go. So let me remind you what um, okay physical interpretation of H. Okay, so as we said that the T, the kinetic energy term is um, T0 and T0 let me write down if you go back to your notes you will find this expression it, um, delta Ri over delta T okay and R is a function of the generalized coordinates and velocities, oh sorry, uh, generalized coordinates and time, mi, i is the label of the particle and you have a half, I omit putting a summation because the i is index, i index i is repeated twice, so it's clear that there is a summation involved here. Okay your kinetic energy is scalar, so this term has to be scalar and clearly this is being dotted into itself. Then you have a linear term and the linear term was mi delta ri over delta t dot delta ri over delta q alpha and you have a q alpha dot. Okay, so I have two summations involved in here. The index i is repeated twice, actually thrice. So this is one of the cases where you will see that even though it's appearing thrice, there is nothing wrong. Okay, so this is perfectly fine. And if you have not seen such things before, make sure that you sit down and convince yourself that this is fine, there is no, no issue. It's not violating our rule which we announced that an index cannot appear more than twice. Okay, and then your alpha is also repeated, so there is a sum over alpha also. That is good. And then you have um, mi is a half delta ri over delta q alpha 
डेल्टा आर आई ओवर डेल्टा क्यू बीटा क्यू अल्फा डॉट क्यू बेटा डॉट परफेक्ट एंड समटाइम्स आई विल राइट दिस एस दिस पीस दिस पीस एस हाफ ए एल्फा बेटा टाइम्स क्यू एल्फा डॉट क्यू बेटा डॉट दिस इज आई एम राइटिंग ओनली फॉर द क्वाडिटिक टर्म द लास्ट लास्ट पीस ओके सो जस्ट टू रिमाइंड यू योर आर आईज आर आर टू मेनी टाइम्स आर इज इन्वॉल्व क्यू वन टू वॉट एवर द नंबर ऑफ डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्रीडम योर सिस्टम हैज विच वी वर राइटिंग आई बिलीव थ्री एंड माइनस के एस ओके एंड इन जनरल देर कुड बी टाइम डिपेंडेंस एज वेल ओके इट्स गुड ऑल्सो रिकॉर्ड योर एल एस टी माइनस यू ओके एंड लाओ कंस्ट्रक्ट एच नाउ लेट्स लुक एट द हेमिल्टोरियन योर एच इज वेर इज इट हेयर क्यू एल फॉर डॉट माइनस एल ओके सो let me write it down yeah let's see what it will be um q alpha dot del by del q alpha dot that is good now your l is t minus u so let me write it here for once minus l okay now your u does not depend on generalized velocities so i'm not looking at those cases uh, where your potential could depend on generalized velocity so i'm not looking at for example um electrodynamics okay so that is not being considered here right now now if that is the case then this is simply q alpha dot del t over del q alpha dot minus l okay that's fine now this becomes q alpha okay now now we will use our um, euler's theorem which says that if you take a partial derivative and insert q alpha uh, that coordinate again and sum over all the coordinates you will get um, if the function is homogeneous then you'll get the same function back multiplied by uh, the degree of that function so when this acts on t0 let, let me write it let me write it like this way q alpha dot del over del q alpha dot just being um just writing everything explicitly here okay so what do we get we get when this acts it gets zero so this term is gone when this acts on t1 you get t1 back because t1 is homogeneous degree 1 so you get t1 when this piece acts on t2 euler's theorem says you get 2t2 and anyway you have minus l l is t minus u which is t0 plus t1 plus t2 minus u okay the potential energy which becomes so i have a t1 which cancels there is a t2 a minus t2 so you get a t <coughs> sorry t2 and minus t0 plus u i hope that's correct let me see perfect or let me write it as t2 plus u minus t0 so nothing very illuminating when um you have an arbitrary system but imagine your transition from cartesian coordinates to 
generalized coordinates does not evolve involve time so let's say this time dependence is not there okay if that time dependence is not there then this term will be zero okay because it involves partial derivatives this term will be zero because of the partial derivative involved here and this term will survive because there are no partial derivative uh, derivatives with respect to time okay so in that case um you, your t will be homogeneous degree 2 okay so if let me see yeah so if there is no if there is no explicit time dependence So let me remove the t then your t is equal to t2 only the quadratic piece if that is the case then your hamiltonian will be t2 or which is same as t now plus u because t naught is gone and t2 is t that you know that is kinetic energy plus potential energy which is the total energy of that system so let me write down here total energy of the system okay so in general h the hamiltonian does not have this interpretation of total energy but whenever your system um, does not have um, explicit time dependence okay in the lagrangian and also uh, you are when you are going from the Cartesian coordinates to the generalized coordinates okay you will not require any um, explicit time dependence in going from R to Q's okay then your Hamiltonian is the total energy okay in that case you can interpret the Hamiltonian to be the total energy I think I'll stop this video here and uh, next time we'll take a simple example where I will uh, do some explicit calculations so about the Hamiltonian so that we get some practice in also doing the calculations and also get an understanding of what the Hamiltonian is okay that's what will be the plan for next video and uh, we stop this one here see you in see you later um, how do I do yes